We are back. Hockey. Still here. Woo. Hello. Back again and better than ever, guys. Like the Leafs right now. They're winning games again. Everything's okay. But at uh, what cost? But it's really not. <laughs> I mean, it's really. Oh, not. no. Come on. I mean, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot about Sam Sonov until just now, to be fair. Ooh, I'm going to quickly throw that on the notes. Completely forgot about that. Uh, anyway, yeah, Sam so that's tough. That's tough. Who is it they signed? Is it Keith, Keith Petr- Petruzzelli? Why does that sound familiar? Um, he, w- I don't know why it sounds familiar, but some context. He, he was a di- uh, Red Wings draft pick. Uh, I don't remember what year off the top of my head. They didn't end up signing him. And then the Leafs ended up signing him to a AHL deal. And uh, oh. now he may be their backup goaltender, or maybe even a starter. Because nope, who stop, knows? Stop, stop, stop. stop. <laughs> okay. Enough, enough. Listen, we'll see a, what how it happens. There's a lot going on around uh, with the Habs, with the Leafs, and with the Bruins. Despite how much of a wagon they've been, I feel like we should open the show with this. Um, the Boston Bruins um, seem to be against the word of the players because it seemed to be every one of them that was asked wasn't agreeing with it have signed Mitchell Miller to an ELC. Uh, Not just any ELC, one with, I think, max bonuses and everything. Uh, And for those of you who are wondering, why does Mitchell Miller sound familiar? This was the dude who uh, the Coyotes drafted all those years ago. I think it was a fourth round pick. Yeah. Was that the first COVID draft? Yeah, that was the first COVID draft. And that was, I think, the Coyotes, technically their first pick in that draft. Yes, because, and that was, the dog is going nuts. He doesn't like the idea of them signing Mitchell Miller either. Uh, yeah, because it was, uh, people were arguing they did it at the time because he was supposed to be like a second round pick. He fell for reasons we're going to get into. Um, and then, yeah, that was that was it. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point, Dan, because they had just lost all their picks because of their illegally testing prospects. Uh, Mitchell no, Miller, I, I, for, was that that year? I think I, it was. Or no. was that they lost their first for like Taylor the, Hall? And that. They traded for Taylor Hall. That was... Wait, there's a Shakur Mamadoulin pick. Really? Okay, anyway, that's not important. Anyway, it's it's weird to think. The Coyotes have lost a lot of picks the past couple of years. Very strange. Anyway, uh, Mitchell Miller for years, apparently, uh, bullied. I think Isaiah Thomas Carruthers was his name. Um, Young man. uh, Again, um, I think he's disabled. uh, A child of color. And uh, that's important for some of the remarks that uh, Mitchell Miller said to him and bullied him apparently physically as well. Um, and this sort of worst thing that came out of all this when it was first coming out was uh, inc- this may me make you a little squeamish, but it is important here. Apparently rubbing a lollipop on a urinal inside of a urinal, sorry, and tricking uh, the other kid to to, to lick it. Uh, and I believe afterwards the kid would, had to test her HIVs and everything. Um now, was Mitchell Miller 14 when this happened? Yes, I'm sure you've all seen this, but I just thought before we get into it, we just do a quick little recap there. Um, obviously, it also came out that when he was drafted, Mitchell Miller wrote a letter to all the teams, but at that time had not apologized um, to Isaiah. Uh, also, apparently up until a week ago, there still wasn't an apology, and Isaiah's foster mother had actually said about a week ago he'd been he had uh, Isaiah had been reached out to by Mitchell via Instagram for an apology where he was told it had nothing to do with hockey. A week later, we know that to not be true. So the Bruins do this; they bring this kid in. I shouldn't say kid. No, no, he's grown up now. He must be twenty, twenty one. He's like he's an adult. Um, listen, Patrice Bergeron seemed disturbed by it. Um, said it went against sort of the culture of the room. Nick Foligno said it really seemed like no one uh, in the group was really for it. Executives have come out sort of discreetly and saying, you know, this shit isn't going to work in Boston. This isn't a market you can get away with it. Hell, the Coyotes didn't get away with it, and that's the smallest market in the league. In the did, it, did executives actually say that? There was a tweet going around about an unnamed executive saying, in a small market mm-hmm. with less reporters, this could work, but not in Boston, even though Arizona, yeah. as we know, is... A very, is, no one cares about the market to be honest. Except which is, for- which is, just from from. Uh, I can't take respect. I cannot take that quote seriously. Considering if you look at the 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 contract itself, it was so clear that there was other teams interested in it. That to hear to have 
a quote like that from an executive means absolutely nothing. Like it's dumb. It's a dumb quote from an executive more so to put it out there because it was extremely clear that like that quote to me sounds like, well, it's a problem if Boston does it, but if you know, another team does it, it's not a big deal. Like it, like it's just clearly there were other teams in on it. I feel like that quote is meaningless. Yes. Yeah. Um, Michael Russo also tweeted out how, for like for me, this is what kind of illustrated how much of a bad job the PR team did. Um, they announced the signing as the Bruins going into Toronto, and then what he tweeted out was the emoticon for meat for the media. See, that's not that. That's not great. Um, I will say at least they did it. They didn't do it at the end of a Friday. Uh, I feel like in is that, that the point, bar? Hockey Canada was it is, and when the Hab signed Logan Mayu, it was. Oh yeah, I remember this. Um, or when they put out their statement, remember they they about like pleasing sponsors and that they buried it in uh, free agency, and then when the OHL said Mayu was reinstated, was in the midst of the juniors getting canceled too. So it is a low standard, but at least they they had to know that going into a, a, a hockey night game against the Leafs. Massive rival, Hockey Night in Canada. They knew it was going to be a big problem. Now, it doesn't help where Don Sweeney's press conference was bad enough. But apparently, Hockey Night in Canada said that they, they he declined to come on to the show and talk about it. Um, I don't really... Uh, which was a bit sort of, okay, then there goes any sort of good grace I think you had. Well, not that you had any to begin with here. Apparently, they didn't consult Jim Montgomery, head coach, about the decision. They did not console the sorry consult the league and gary bettman who is very it's very rare to hear gary sort of be definitive about anything i'm gonna read something a little here this is obviously he had a press conference about the global series and all that um shout out to the blue jackets getting killed in both games they have not been good this is a statement from the commissioner um which is it just i i don't know the last time we've had a statement like this from the commissioner um from what I understand and heard through the media, what he did as a 14-year-old is reprehensible, unacceptable. Before the Bruins made the decision to sign him, we were not consulted. I happened to talk to Cam Neely since the time he was signed. He's not coming into the NHL. He's not eligible at this point to come into the NHL. I can't tell you that he'll ever be eligible to come into the NHL. If at some point uh, they think they want him to play in the NHL, that being the Bruins, obviously, and I'm not sure they're anywhere close to that point, we're going to have to clear him and his eligibility. It will be based on all the information that we get firsthand at the time. So the answer is they are free to sign him and play somewhere else. That's another uh, another organization. But nobody should think at this point that he uh, is or may ever be NHL eligible. And the Bruins understand that. The AHL, apparently, um, its president is going to have a meeting with Mitchell Miller later this week, I believe. Or yep. it's Sunday. So I, whenever you start the week in your own opinion, uh, the president's going to have a sort of sit down with him. And determine his future, so he may not be able to play in the AHL even. And I believe he's supposed to report to AHL Providence. Um, and by the way, before anyone sort of listening is wondering, why would they sign this player anyway? USHL Defenseman of the Year last year, I think he had, it was like 40 or 50 goals in that time. So he's got skill, is unfortunately the pure thing of it. That's simply why. And why did the Coyotes draft him? They saw a guy who was eligible and was projected to be in the second round follow them in the fourth. That's simply what this is. Yeah. Like, yeah. like what was it? Didn't didn't um Don Sweeney say, like, I don't even know if this is the right decision? Did he say that? Yes, yeah, pretty much. Oh Maybe God. not word for word like that, but almost like that. Like this is that that's this is the most confusing part of all this to me is they sign him and then and i'm not saying they should have doubled down but they didn't double down and now they just look like they look like respect they look a little bit cowardly with how everything's gone with from they signed him uh don sweeney has his press conference has a list of quotes that First off, make it look, make it seem like he's not the one who wanted to do this. The way those, a lot of those quotes came off to me talking about how, like you said, 
I don't know if this is the right decision. I don't know if I'd ever uh, uh, forgive him if it was my child. Like it made the all everything leading up to this up to today seems like he also did not want to do this. Plus not going on hockey night in Canada. Like you knew what this was going to create. And then it's dumped on the players. Like Patrice Bergeron has a sit down interview with, Elliot Friedman yesterday. That was so and, uncomfortable, but I'd like to say that was yeah. probably one of the most uncomfortable interviews I've ever watched. And, and then you know, if you're Don Sweeney, Cam and Cam Neely, you know that it's going to be asked at a, mm-hmm. at every press conference that happens prior to the game. And it was. There was quote how many quotes were there from yesterday? Patrice, I saw Patrice Bergeron, I saw Nick Felino. Like you, you dumped it on the players. Mm-hmm. You knew it was. It, you you had your press conference, and then you just threw. It, like to me, it felt like you threw them under the bus a little bit. Something else I just want to quickly mention before I think Danny, you're about to say something there. So sorry, um, Sweeney on signing Mitchell Miller. I'm not going to downplay that this has been a personal struggle as well as a professional struggle. Uh, they did not reach out to the victim's family during the vetting process. Is something else uh, pretty bad here? And one more thing. One more thing I add before I throw it to here to you here, Daniel. And this is something Arpen Basu with the Athletic pointed out. Um, and I'm going to read Mitchell Miller's statement in a second here. Um, there's been no mention of the racism here. In some of the other ways he treated Isaiah, everyone talks about the lollipop incident. There was more than that. Um, and then I'll read it in a second here, but but go ahead, Dan. Yeah, um, I actually was going to mention the Arpen Basu okay. uh, quote as well, where there's just so many factors that have been here that I think when we see the tweets that are happening with this, um, it sometimes it could be a bit singular for the way that people respond. They're like, oh, I remember when I was 14 years old, but like, it's pretty crazy where it's like, I don't remember doing any of that. I don't remember holding these types of things in my head. I don't like, I don't see how we could just look at it like, Oh, you know, like I hate that stupid quote when people say like, boys will be boys because so apparently seen, his mom yeah. said that, which yeah. is like, what? It was like a repeated pattern of so many things going on. So many forms of harassment that I don't, understand well you know frankly like i'm not accusing anyone well i have to in this way it's his parent but the way his mom kind of approaches as well is just like is this kind of like a shared mentality that they're just having with it we're like you know come on like let's just move on like why are we still talking about this but it still has to be talked about um so um by the way on top of the racism thing um frank cervelli pointed out and there were some um some some DMs that were coming out, like a mini sort of interview with Joni Mayer Carruthers, who was Isaiah's foster mother, I believe is the, the direct relationship. Um, and part of that, the team basically referred to everything with Miller as a single incident, yet the victim's mother says this was, quote, years of trauma uh, on top of that. Um, now, I'm just going to read Miller's statement here um, because I think we've all seen it, and I have a lot of problems with this. Um First off, the first thing I think you have to start with is an apology. And instead it is, quote, when I was in eighth grade, I made an extremely poor decision and acted very immaturely, said Miller. I bullied one of my classmates. Immature would be an understatement, by the way. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I deeply regret the incident and have apologized to the individual. Since the incident, I have come to better understand the far-reaching consequences of my actions that I failed to recognize and understand nearly seven years ago. I strive to be a better person and positively contribute to society as a member of the Bruins organization. I will continue to participate in community programs to both educate myself and share my mistake with others to show what a negative, sorry, mistakes let me get that clear. Sorry. He, he did say mistakes. I didn't see the yes. Sorry. Um, with others to show what negative impact those actions can have on others. I want to be clear. What I did when I was 14 years old was wrong and unacceptable. There is no place in this world for being disrespectful to others. Disrespectful. I mean, sorry. Let me just say that again. There is no place in this world for being disrespectful to others. And I pledge to use this opportunity to speak out against mistreating others. First off, The passage of time was referenced three times there. Um, Disrespectful. 
That's an understatement. Yeah. But I'm going to take my glasses off when I say this quickly because I just have to rub my eyes and be like, dude, okay, guys, I can remember. Okay, so 14, he said, God, grade eight. I, I, I thought you would have been in high school by that. Okay, anyway, he may have an early birthday. I'm thinking around grade eight or nine perspective here. Let's Let's think back to that, guys. Rubbing... I think there's there's stuff like he he apparently like had one time bashed Isaiah's head into a wall. Yeah, the brick wall. Um, like that's just you know th- that's sort of that's a different level of just being a, a a bull. That's just being a monster. Rubbing and being racist too is just sort of another sort of whatever. But the lollipop thing, and I think this is it's not the only incident, but it's the one that stands out because it is the most monstrous thing of it all. That isn't boys being boys. That isn't that isn't a mistake. That's evil. Is what that is. That is I, I can't fathom that. Like, and what idea is that boy lads? Oh, you know what we should do? No. That's what always gets to me. That statement wasn't an apology. That was an emphasis on this is what I did in the past. Whatever, whatever. And I'll emphasize what I said with Logan Mayu because there's been a lot of comparisons to that. And I think we're missing the point if we're trying to compare which is worse here. Okay. Think of it like this, right? If you think someone deserves a second chance, which, okay, fine. Does everyone deserve a second chance if you think so? Whatever. Okay. This is what I always go back to. Is that second chance, should it be with the Boston Bruins? With a, if, if it looks like obviously he won't play in the NHL this year, probably, but an ELC that is going to be worth, if it's full bonus and stuff, probably over $4 million. Is that a real second chance? But no, I, it's I, not. That not is own, yeah, it's like a privilege in its yeah, greatest. Thing. It's, like that it, is so messed up. But I, I don't think it has, for me, I, I don't think it has to do with it being the Boston Bruins. He could be going to the Arizona Coyotes. So what I like, just mean is like, like, it's an NHL team. Like, yeah, 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 so yeah. Here, so, you know okay. I mean? No, yeah. Th- like, it's, yeah, it's, it's weird. It, it Obviously, it caught me off guard regardless of what team it was. But it caught me off guard a lot more when it was Boston. Mm-hmm. Because of how much we talk about that locker room yeah. mm-hmm. and the things that come out of that locker room, um, and you and you go back to some of the things we've talked about in the past, and so it was, it was it it caught me very much off guard when it was Boston who made this decision, and. It it was worse by how they responded to it, mm-hmm. and everything that they've done. I like, like yeah, you're right. Like it, he does to go back. I guess to your point, like about second chances. It's like, listen, man, I'm all for second chances. If you, you know, deserve it, and like I'm not. It's not. I'm not setting the bar high in half these cases to be honest and i i don't think what we're asking to be done is setting the bar high by any means but it's not like he's hit the bar at all and i think like that's the frustrating part is like he hasn't even touched the bar let alone passed it and we're having this discussion like what what have you done that isn't court issued agent told you to do previous teams what have you done on your own accord no but like go read the statement like screw like pass take all it's that very stuff plain, out. yeah like go, go read yeah. the, the go let's look at the statement you just read what was the emphasis three times in that statement the emphasis That's on bad. i was 14 i get it you're 20 years old now i get it you're not but it's the it's what you did at 14 people i'm 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 the first person to tell you people make mistakes i'd be the first person to tell you that that is an uh, that's beyond a mistake i don't know what the word for that would be that is beyond a mistake like man that it, it's just that's the toughest part it's like what are we doing here um 
Chris Johnson tweeted this out when everything was breaking down. Uh, Mitchell Miller's entry level contract with the Bruins contains just sort of expand about the, the the contract here. Um, contains the maximum allowable signing bonus each year ninety five thousand uh, dollars, more than a lot of people make in one year. Uh, plus performance bonus is one hundred five k eighty k eighty k. It contains the maximum AHL salary allowable, so he will also have that um, if the AHL does decide to let him play. Um, I'm just going through everything to make sure uh, we touched on every note of it. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Patrice Bergeron also mentioning the word inclusion when he was talking about the Mitchell Miller stuff and how that was a big part of that locker room too. Um, I think he was asked in a, a media scrum, um, how does this, do you think it's going to change the culture? Is it going to undermine it? And he very sternly was like, no, it's not, it's not going to change our room. And, uh, you know what? It also makes you think, how long is Bergeron even going to be around now? Because we know he just took that one year. There was word of retirement. Um, you talk about this great locker room. Brad Marchand, despite how, how good he has looked after this hip injury or surgery, just had hip surgery and is on the other side of 30. Yeah. Um, this core isn't going to be around forever. And you know what? Remember Vander Kane going to San Jose? Ah, the Sharks locker room is great. And um, it's sort of fallen apart since Evander Kane. There was a whole buyout stuff. It was just a mess. And it's not like Evander Kane's reputation has gotten any better. Um, anything else we want to talk about with Mitchell Miller here, guys? Yeah, I want to talk about real quick how fast the NHLPA jumped on this. Yo, I completely yeah. forgot about that. Yes. So what so, exactly did they say, Alex? So obviously, Gary Bettman, we talked about earlier, Gary Bettman said that... Um, that he was suspended, even though like when they said that, I'm like, I didn't know that the NHL had suspended his eligibility, but that's like, that's besides the point. Um, and Greg Wyshynski tweeted last night, NHLPA tells ESPN that the NHL has not informed them about any suspension to uh, Mitchell Miller or anything that would impact his eligibility. NHLPA said there needs to be more info provided by NHL uh, regarding Commissioner Gary Bettman's statement regarding Gary Bettman's statements on Saturday. Shut up. Uh, yeah. Shut up. What? Shut up. Like, like, guys, shut up. Like, like, you think of all the times in the past the PA have been late for something, and mm. this is going to be your quick... Shut up. This is the Who's standard that they're going to establish. By the way? Who's that? Don't know. Don't know. Yeah. Shut up. Read the room. Ah, they God, they suck. God, the PA suck. Um, anything else, Alex? Anything else, Daniel? I'm just, I don't know. We we talked about it already. It just, I think for me, it just, it's a bit of a weird thing to process that, like the Boston Bruins, the team that we've mentioned, the culture they have, the room they have, the way things have been just so close to the vest for them, and how they've been able to maintain this this streak of success, this. If I say um in a way a a model organization in 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 many ways and to kind of have the slip up it's just like we we mentioned reading the room but it's also kind of you know looking at you know like what you have and not want to disrupt that in any way and I think now when you mentioned I like that you guys said that it is on the players now to speak out to be the ones to say like this is what's going on is what we feel it just two things it's just it's just you know willful blindness on don sweeney's part and the second thing is just it's an unneeded distraction for for what for a guy that let's try to look beyond it because of the skill of things of how he's been able to perform even though you know he lost his ncaa scholarship and he's just ripping it up in the ushl um quickly i've just actually seen something from an hour ago a statement from Mitchell Miller's agent. So we can just quickly give this a read. I haven't read it yet, so this will be sort of uh, very quick of us. Um, the decision to take on Mitchell Miller as a client was not one the O2K sport management made lightly. Uh, as one of the very few black NHL agents in the league, a member of the NHL's, diverse, uh, NHL's diversity and inclusion committee, and as a black man who has spent his entire life in hockey, I understand the gravity of the situation and respect the fierce emotions and reactions to the initial reporting and commentary around Mr. Miller's past behavior. 
O2K Sports Management would not have agreed to represent Mitchell without months of research, deliberation, introspection within our organization, and conversations with outside advisors. Moreover, when deliberating, uh, deliberating whether to represent Miller, we learned throughout the last six years he's been volunteering with organizations uh, such as Spread the Word Campaign, Little Miracles, Adaptive Sports of Ohio, Gliding Stars. Furthermore, this summer, furthermore, this summer, okay, Mitchell and I met with the committee. Um, with uh, sorry, Mitchell and I met uh, with and committed to working with the following: Bill Proudman, white men as full diversity partners. The Carnegie Initiative, Hockey Equality, also before signing his contract, Mitchell met with uh, and committed to working with local community projects such as Bullying Prevention Program, After School Program, Youth Guidance Program. We believe in uh, restorative justice. Mitchell and I are on that path together, and I welcome you all to join us. O2K Sports Management believes in accountability, and so does our client. After weighing all these factors, we came to the conclusion to embrace the forward-thinking approach of Professor Loretta Ross and chose to can- the counsel, not cancel, counsel, not cancel, as the path to racial healing and understanding. Um, again, no mention of Isaiah in that. I just want to say at the top of my head. And again, what distinct there is something that he made the sole decision, guys, not something the agent pushed him to. Again, sorry, that is like, we have not seen that until just now. That's just something like right off the head here. Um that's great but again if you go back to mitchell miller's statement from yesterday that statement doesn't reflect the statement you just read fair like is that fair is that unreasonable to say that that statement you just read from his agent doesn't ref isn't reflected on the statement that Mitchell Miller released or whoever wrote that statement for him yesterday. Fair. That's fair. That's great. No, like I commend him for doing those things if that's what he's done. But that statement doesn't read like that. That mm-hmm. statement reads to me as someone who I, I don't, I don't want to say arrogant, but who's so focused on the one thing of him being 14 and him being young and it happening in the past that it where why are we still I get it you were for we're aware this the facts the situation and the facts hasn't changed since 2020 no one's forgotten about this that's why the outrage is still here it's why there's outrage when you saw when he signed with the Bruins um, also, that the little miracle stuff, um, I want people to remember that. Just remember it for a little later, by the way. I'm not going to say anything now because I don't want to go off of people who are just putting something on Twitter. But um, I want to remember that for later, please. Eventually. I feel like that's going to be something important down the line. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. God damn it. Uh, the Bruins, like, come on. Like, you didn't need it. Okay. Moving on. Very quickly. Something a little fun, just to really get the mood up again. Something important that we need to talk about. Um, and now we can continue with um with some hockey stuff. Guys, is Ryan Reynolds going to buy the Suns? I, I hope he does, just so it upsets Mike. So he's obviously doesn't have the net worth to probably buy the entire team itself. No, because it's probably going to be north of seven hundred million dollars. But people have heard, sort of floated out the idea, and they talked a lot about on Thirty Two Thoughts podcast on Friday um, that. He could be invited in maybe in a minority role and put in, I think they were mentioning it's normally around minimum like $10 million. Um, that would just be a really nice PR thing. Obviously, a lot of names have been thrown out there and when it actually happens, we'll we'll, we'll talk about it. But um, it would be really nice if you get a guy like Ryan Reynolds in there. Like that'd be like the biggest PR move for the league in how long? It, it'd be, uh, it'd definitely be nice to, it'd be, cool to see uh, considering what he's doing um with uh his soccer that soccer team rex mfc over in the uk um so to see try to bring some of that uh well he has that tv show i don't know if you've if you've seen it's like a docuseries called welcome to Wrexham. no yeah uh, it's <laughs> about the team i don't remember what streaming service it's on okay. you're gonna have to i, I don't remember um 
And so, again, something fun, something different, not necessarily for soccer, but it would be something different for hockey, who hasn't really done a well-produced docuseries in uh, many, many years. Um, yeah. By the way, uh, Houston won the, uh, God, what's it called? The World, the World Series. Series. The World Series. Is the trophy called anything special? No, it's... Uh... Let me find that. What's well, Houston? So yeah, good. Congratulations. Yeah, great. Um, on top of that, I just I just realized that we should probably mention the World Series, eh? Um, also, the Sens have lost five straight. By the way, should we be concerned about the, that? The, they've done what? They've lost five straight. The Sens. I did not know that. Yeah, Giroux huh. got his three hundredth last night, but then they lost to Philly anyway. Which they're comparing. Like, um, I think they're like one in four when Nikita Zaitsev is in the game. I but think they, it's more than that. No comment. More than that. And or then like, they're then uh, they're undefeated when he's out of it. Yeah. No yeah. comment. I mean, you know, Nikita Zaitsev shouldn't be the be all end all of your day. Like, I get Norris is out, yeah, but yeah. you know they should. Um, like, even out. if they win their game in hand, they're still a point behind the Habs, which is you know, not great. No. Oh, boy, when the hell did Tampa jump up to second in the division? Yes, they woke up. That's nice. Cool. Great. It's like they were never tired. Idiots. Idiots. Silent killers. Idiots. Everyone everyone who's saying they're tired, this and that. Shut up. (laughs) Shut up. Stop. Stop. Brutal. Brutal. uh, Um, I hate this division. Because they didn't really change. I mean, like from last year, there wasn't that much of a turnover the same way. Like Ryan Mm -hmm. McDonough, but. Still Tampa. Saying Nick Osman's scoring a bit. Guess and then Hagel's going to make the all-star team. I don't know. Oh, no, he's not. Where's the all-star game against Nashville this year? Or Isn't Florida? it Florida? Isn't it Florida? Great. Okay. Last year, right. it was Vegas. I think it's So fine. we're bunking Mark, with see, Alex Bob Gardner. I'll see. <laughs> Recording live. Reporting live from the scene. Our friend, Alexander Baumgartner. Okay, first, the Habs. Then we'll go to the Leafs. Um, tough loss against the Golden Knights. Uh, I think you saw there was an elite team versus a rebuilding one. A um, lot of points from Suzuki, a lot of points from Caulfield. Kirby Doc's looking good on that first He's line. And Sapkowski scored. Don't think you can ask for a better loss than that in Tank Nation, can you, boys? So, our, uh, who's picking up Kirby Doc in the Fantasy League? Let's, let's start so, the discussion. Here's the thing. I'm being, he has more points into Brinkat, by the way. Just thought I'd mention that. Um, I obviously already have Caulfield and Suzuki. And uh, Matheson will be a, is only going to play until Charlie McAvoy is hurt. So that's like a, I can't take a third full time hap. So I can't take Doc. You but I told can't. you guys I think uh-huh. he'd be worth a look. I, I mean that I would have at oh, least sure. should have thought about it. But mm-hmm. my IR situation is a little messy right now, so I don't really want to pick up another guy on the bench. But I need to replace Jamie Ben at some point because that's not going to. It's not going to last. Who do you you dropped someone for Jamie Ben? Now who was it? Manjapani. Oh, because he wasn't doing anything. All he's struggling. Yeah, Mark's struggling. Yeah, there they are. They are. Um, well, I mean, Daryl Sutter hasn't been, you know, people are saying he's maybe not happy with Huber, though. Is Daryl Sutter on the hot seat? No, I'm just joking. No, God. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> if, even if you know he who was, is, Mike you Sullivan. Know, no. You know, even if he was Daryl Sutter, yeah. it'll be like he'll come back in five years. Yeah, yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah. He'll, he, he'll be fine. Back. Yeah. He'll be fine. Is Mike Sullivan on the hot seat? No, I'm just joking. I don't think so. <laughs> but they've lost, they've lost six straight. So Okay, well, let's go to the Habs, and then we can laugh about right. Pittsburgh losing like six, seven straight. In the so second. the Habs, Kirby Doc, I saw a lot of tweets. Everyone saying that trade worked out really well for them. Well, yeah, so far, I mean, you know, he's mm-hmm. playing well. Like, uh, listen, I love Kirby Doc. It's just the one, you know, the group of people that don't like him for some reason is the French media. Like, it has been relentless. I have no idea why, but they just don't like him. It's just sort of, you know, eventually, I don't, I think we can all agree, him being on the top line may work for now, and it could be great, but ultimately his job is probably either going to be, depending on how this year goes and who they can draft, if it's a center, Maybe in the long term, he stays on that line or he's a top six winger. But at the same point, you would also like that he would... Apply. Eventually, he's going to play full-time down the middle. They're obviously taking their time with him, but and he's switched between. But, I mean, you have a top six contributor right now, which is good. 
Exactly. The Blackhawks definitely look silly for that. It's trade, really but. crazy. Listen, like, guys, you guys say that, but in like three or four years, when Frank Nazar is nasty, you're all going to be pissed off that you Frank Nazar. Oh, Frank well, Nizar. I'm like, still a little bitter about it. But, yeah, like, I, I'm I, just I, saying, like, I, listen, you know. I don't think Chicago's pissed off about anything. I think they're just more than they say. just do. Yeah, <laughs> but um, it's crazy. Like, I always forget Kirby Doc's only 21. Yeah, man, he's been, how wow. much he's played already. Well, he's the Hughes. He's the same draft as Hughes and Caulfield. He de- uh, yeah. yeah, he didn't get sent back, right? No, he played right away. He gets well. He played at the. Remember, he was the captain of the World Juniors, but he never played because he, got he got broke injured. his hand. Hand that was it. Yeah. yeah, that caused a conundrum when we had to had to have the discussion. Uh, oh God! About, yeah. Should we send so players do- to the World Juniors? I'm like, are you kidding yes. me right now? <laughs> Watch Seattle not send Shane Wright. Played like 13 minutes the other day. They're gonna keep him. They're gonna keep him to play that 13 minutes. Yeah, they are. They are. But hey, I mean, listen, 13 minutes is in bad compared to six. Mm-hmm. So yeah. don't forget they were using Safkovsky in Montreal at like 11 minutes to start. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you, you can take it. I like that, Adam. Smooth transition back to the Habs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Habs are gonna make a move. On Insider Trading, Pierre Lebrun does a great transition sub. Daniel, thank you so much. Uh, Pierre Lebrun was talking about how maybe the Caps and the Habs can be a uh, a, a sort of trading partner. By the way, Alex picked up Tom Wilson in fantasy. I'm assuming he's right now on your 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 IR. Yeah, Smart we'll move. see. We'll see Smart what move. happens. Um, and apparently, on top of that, Kent Hughes apparently has been talking to a lot of teams. Um, Druin's name has been out there. The Don of Hoffman. Which probably explains why there's been so many scouts and like AGMs at Habs games lately. I think Pierre Dorian was at the Minnesota game. I think I mentioned that on the show or to Mike. I don't know. It blends together. Um, it's like 32 thoughts. It just all blends. Yeah, exactly. Um, they can move Hoffman. That'd be pretty hot. That'd be pretty hot. And, and I think uh, with the Caps, I think it was Connor Brown they announced last week is out for the season. Yeah. Which is it the whole season? Yeah, it's the whole that's season. What it, that's what it meant. Six to eight months. Yeah, so probably not coming back. And like, they're, other than the obvious, it feels like their offense has been lacking a little bit. So, but again, losing Hunter Brown, losing uh, Nick Backstrom, it makes sense that they're looking for a guy up front. Yeah, I think Dylan Strom has been a solid stopgap. I think at least in the center position because he really he can't play wing, but they need they need more. I think the Capitals have tried, but I don't like. We, when's the last time we've really seen them do that like umph move? Because remember those contending years before they got the cup? Like they every year they were going all in, and Manda? then now the I just last, kind of did you say Manta? Oh, yeah, that, that one was. was I, I don't know. Was that like an all in one? I Daniel, it was the no, move yeah. of the dri- of the deadline. I thought it was, it was just the because most, it was the last minute. One. It, yeah, I mean that too. But the thing was, they gave up a first, a second, and Jacob Verana. Like I, I'd say that, and Richard Panic, but that was more so. Uh, I think that was the cap dump of it. Yeah, yeah. So like I, I'd say that was the pretty that was uh, the last oomph move that that they've done. What about bringing Eric Gustafson? All right. Is that where he is now? Oh. Power play special. No, is Eric he back Gustafson. in Chicago? Is he? He's been on so many teams. He was there last year. And now he is. Anyway, um, did you guys um He's see in what Washington? Ovechkin? You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Did, did you guys see what o- uh, Ovechkin did last night? By the way, I did. Mm-hmm. Most in goals. Those, those beautiful, beautiful screaming eagle jerseys. Just keep them together, boys. Officially, more goals than anyone for a single team. Obviously, Gretzky. You know. Went and played in another team, and obviously, you know, Gordy Howe, we all forget, a little messy there. But um, Alex Ovechkin, most goals scored ever for playing with or for a single team. Uh, insane, insane scoring goals. He's getting hot. You see yeah. the shot too, how he just sort of I don't even think he was even in a great position to take the shot, but he just sort of let it come right in front of him. Yeah, and it's just it was on the power play, it mirrored the same sort of style jersey. He scored his first goal against, I think it was the Blue Jackets all those years ago. It's just patented Ovi. If he breaks Gretzky's record, it's going to be from that spot. Like, it's just going to be. And it's got to be in that jersey. No, I was going to say that. <laughs> just keep, keep it. It's so much better than all the other capital jerseys. You know what would be cool? Because he wore those during his rookie year, right? 
the, I the, think it was that, or it was the dark style that had the Capitol building on them. He has to bring back the different colored tinted visors. God, that'd be cool. God, before the be facial awesome. hair, before the facial hair, Ovi. Are we nervous about them and the and the penguins? Like legitimately? Are we nervous? Because I'm getting nervous for the penguins. Like I am. There's been a lot of so I didn't know until I was just reading a bunch of stuff on the Athletic about the penguins where just how tough of a situation they're actually in with like they can't risk any injuries the cap right now i think they have eighty thousand free and they can't bring up ty smith even though he's nhl already like he's still in a wilkesbury they have at this current second um projected cap space five thousand dollars well i saw people talking about j fresh especially that people really wish they had john marino right now and i saw this uh, oh this was funny Saw this tweet that was a Penguins fan saying, you know, I don't get on the power play when Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin and Jake Gensler are there while Jeff Petrie is taking unscreened point shots. And I went, ah, it's, good, good. Some things never change. Oh, well, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. The, the, like, I am a little worried. Yeah. But I, I look at the standings right now and I look at who's above them. And I say, okay, let's start from the top down. New Jersey, they're nine and three. Are they going to be that hot the rest of the year? Yes. No. That's is this I, their year? I like Jack Hughes, but you know, I, I like Jack Hughes. I like Nico Hischier. I don't know if they're going to be this hot all year. I think they're going to push. I think they could hit a wild card spot. Maybe I don't think they're touching the top three in that division. Carolina, they'll be up there. There be. Yep. Philly, 6-3-2 and two to start the season. Are they going to be this good the rest of the season? No. They're probably going to fall out a little bit. They're going to work hard. They're going to play hard. They're probably going to fall out of the playoff, a playoff spot. The Islanders? Yeah, I could see them. I mean, did you say, but, um, you know, one thing I saw, Brock Nelson has 11 points in 10 games. Not bad. I not bad. did not expect that. Uh, yeah, no, that's... So they're looking good. They're still with They're looking good. There's yeah. And then it's the Rangers. And obviously they're gonna be in a top, they're gonna be in a divisional spot. Like not even a question. I don't know about that. Are we worried about Igor Shisterkin? Guys, no, 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 stop. Don't start that conversation. I don't want I don't want to hear I don't want to get a text about it. Listen, second best goalie in the in the game. Like that's all I'll say. Um I I I I think they'll make Price is still under contract, Alex. It's third. Yeah, he's uh, Igor's third. He's not. Carey Price is on LTIR. He doesn't count. He's a um, that's not. That's that's not how I'm counting it. Listen, Brent Seabrook was under contract for years. He wasn't. He wasn't top anyone's top defenseman. I always wondered, did he get a ring when Tampa won? No. I think he deserved. He deserved. Like, he's under contract. Without, do they right? win without him? No. Oh, that's true. Because they don't win without the LTI room. Or was okay, he was well, there? you know what? Then Gary Bettman deserves a contract for starting this mess. <laughs> Listen, his reward isn't the ring. His reward is the tears of uh, Canadian hockey fans. No, his, like- no, no. His reward is being in the Hockey Hall of Fame for whatever apps, for whatever oh, damn reason. That's crap. That's crap. Uh, so does Mary Gabrick I- get a ring? He should. Yeah. Or Anders Nielsen. Maybe. I forgot he was. A- yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least give him a pat on the back and say, hey, bud, thanks. Um, the Leafs. Yeah. Uh, they have a free roster spot, which they're going to need sort of get, because uh, Sam Solov is out right now. Um, and they get that contract spot because Nikolai Abe Kubel was waived and picked up by the Caps. And there's your answer for who will be claimed this season. Yeah, And uh, there it is. Now we just have to see who's the trade candidate. I'm still saying. Jordy. What's the what's the other? What, what were the three tiers? So it's it's like plays themselves out the market. For being too good, maybe Sam okay. Solov will do that. Wave, I think trade set yeah. down, which I think you can say that's Adam got debt. So yeah. we just I think we just need a trade, mm-hmm. and I think we're good. Well, trade and 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 playing them way their their way out the market for being too good, and we need a cap dump move, and we need a cap dump move. Oh, we're ways away from this. Oh my god, <laughs> I thought we were much closer than I thought. The okay. But there's I progress. Mean, listen, Some we progress. Got, we got time. We got yeah, time. yeah. Before American Thanksgiving is big for me. Pardon? I think the, the, the waiver claim before American Thanksgiving it's is big. Here. Yeah, it's a good start. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a good start. Um, and Prime, Amazon Prime uh, but sales. I, I, I want to ask about another player on the team. 
Oh. Nick Robertson sat the last couple of games. Uh-huh. A shame. Now, I need to know why. The Leafs hate me. I, I don't no. know. I, I don't know, but like, I'm not particularly pressed about it. I understand people are pressed about it. But frankly, I don't care because it's the least of my problems. I think <sighs> right now, because... And I've been looking at the stats where that second line is one of the most productive lines right now. What? Who's the second line? So uh, Kerfoot, Tavares, Nylander. Dude, it's like it's like it kind of works sometimes. Yeah, it's and not like I've been saying that. As much as I love Nick, Big Nick, um, Big Nick. I don't see him on the first line. I don't no. see him on a checking line. So I understand where they're coming from. Where like they they have one two in a row. No, we could say that for the first time this year. And it's working for now. Like they beat Boston. They had a good game against Philadelphia. So I guess like just don't disrupt when you don't have to, maybe. That's what I'm thinking. But here's the thing is, you know, I go look at this lineup. Um and there's really one guy I can look that for whatever reason they have Pierre Engvall, Kale Kale Yarncrook, and Wayne Simmons as the third line. That's probably your fourth line. I, I don't understand why we keep tweeting it like this, even though the the usage is they're used as a fourth line compared to the fourth line that's listed as Zach Aston Reese, um, Zach Aston Reese, David Kampf, and Dennis Malkin. The only player I look at on this roster, and I'm like, here's who you can replace for Nick Robertson is Dennis Malkin. I was thinking that too. Yeah. Like similar like, style. I just, similar style nice. it's fine yeah like it's fine like it's not that big a deal you play him on the third line i'm not entirely pressed about that like i i don't look listen you're not gonna play him on the fourth line you're not you're just not it's not a thing so do you move simmons down and then basically swap out mulligan put robertson there and then make well it simmons is robertson on the fourth Yarncrow? line simmons is on the fourth oh line. god sorry yeah yeah sorry like Despite yeah. why, for whatever reason, David Alter lists it in that order, maybe that's the line rush order. I don't know. But the way they're used, that Engvall, Yarn, Kirk Simmons is used more so as a fourth line, in my opinion. Okay. So you mean Robertson, Camp, Aston Reese? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like that's not the that's not the worst thing. Again, I think it goes to Daniel's point. The lot the last two games have gone better than before. Why clearly this is whatever is working is working. I don't think it has anything to do with the line combinations more so that, you know, the players who need to give a crap look like they kind of give a crap. That's I think what we're seeing. We're seeing here. Also, I think it, I know this is the most minute thing. And after my screaming, uh, after me saying one player is not going to fix this team, I think putting Tim, I think having Timothy Lilligren in there definitely helps a little bit. Not the sole reason the last two games have gone any better, though. Um, How did he play last night, by the way? Honestly, like last night, I, I didn't get to watch it live, but I saw I was looking this more. I was watching uh, this morning. I thought he played fine. Okay. Uh, people were saying like la- uh, in terms of the team last night, it was like the best game they played all season. Mm-hmm. Sure. I could agree with that. Like the. the I, I don't know if we want to talk about it now or we want to talk about it after. Like this is the most frustrating p- part for me is these last two games have been extremely frustrating to watch. Not because they've won, but it's because this is how when I'm on when I'm here yelling like I've been the last three episodes, all I've wanted is them to play like that. It's the most That's predictable it. way the season could have mm-hmm. gone. The stars came oh, out. Yeah, man. Matthews Marner. But it's not even that the stars came out. It's how they play. I don't know uh, any other way to describe it other than how they played. Like Mm -hmm. what they did against Philly and what they did against Boston. Like uh, that's what I want to see on a Mm -hmm. nightly basis. That's the most frustrating part. Isn't that I don't think that they're not skilled enough to do it. It's that they're not – they don't do it every night, and that's what's going to get you to win. Look at Boston. Look at Tampa. Like Just within your division alone, look at how they play. It doesn't matter if they're tired or not, even though that's a lie because they're never tired. But they are, they are true, 
true champions, those guys, the way mm-hmm. they play. I watch them play, and I'm like, that team can win a cup because on a night, every single night, maybe an off night here or there, maybe here or there, they play like champions. So are we going to have early predictions now, Alex, before what, the playoffs? In what way? What predictions? Looking like champions. I no, like man, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm like, I'm not, <laughs> no, no, like uh, the Bruins. Yeah, well, is that what you mean? You mentioned Daniel? the Leafs, right? No, no. I'm, I, listen, I'm my. What I said the last three episodes, my opinion of this team hasn't changed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. This team, my opinion of this team, will not change until the playoffs. Okay. Like honestly, we are on I, Alex watch. So it's all the same thing. Yeah. They do what I saw was apparently there was a lot of urgency in that game. It's big. I feel like they they had to forget the Flyers game. They had to win last night. I think yeah. that would have been a, a a very. I feel like the headlines today would have been a lot more interesting if they had lost. But yeah. um, there's just there's just something about the Leafs. Whenever it's that last straw, they sort of it's like Pierre Engvall. <laughs> It's like, it's, um, yeah. right before he gets that last chance is when he, he rises from the ashes. It, By it's the, way, the most um, frustrating thing. Quick roster question before we talk about Sam Solonoff. Um, mm-hmm. Is Kerfoot dead? Of the, okay, let me think of it like this. Okay. Can you afford to have both Yarn Croak and Kerfoot in the bottom six? And I know Kerfoot right now is on the second line. But let's say in a perfect world by the end of the year, is it fair to say you'd like to see Robertson on the second line? Now, we talked about the third line stuff here. But what I'm just thinking is if there's an area where Kerfoot falls to the bottom six again, if you wanted to juice up your depth a bit more, does he go to make the salary work? Because in an ideal world, perfect roster, you can't have both him. I'm just trying to finally get him traded because I'm sick of Kerfoot debates every week. Probably. Okay. That's all I want. Like wanted. he's probably the. <sighs> is he I up wouldn't... this year? No. Yeah. I think. Is well, he... no. Yeah, he's is up next this year. year. This is his last year. No, I'm pretty sure it's next year. And we'll double check uh, because if so, Alex Kerfoot could have a great back half of the season and play his way out the market price wise. And he could be the unexpected candidate or he's the trade guy. You never know, guys. Oh, he is a UFA at the end of this year. That's a good Interesting. Yeah. Enough of these. Own so you don't style. think it's you don't think it's stop it. Stop it. Don't it even start that. Don't even rentals. start that narrative. Don't even own start rentals. that. Don't even start that narrative. You oh, Lou. we're going to get better by having a player already on our team. Dude, Lou did it like enough. Enough. No, no, I'm no, not no. having this. Co- I'm not a having dumb idea. Like. <sighs> oh, and Justin Hall's also off. Up this so, year. Good. so Petra, yeah, who cares? Um, so Petra yeah. Zelly and Shelgren yeah. going yeah. forward. How yeah. far is Matt Murray around? I don't know. <laughs> he's on so the stars. Caroline what are you talking tonight? about? Hmm? Pardon? He's on the stars. Oh, oh yeah, so he's on the Daniel, stars. the other Matt Murray. <laughs> um, so if we look right now, in four hours, the Leafs play the Hurricanes, yeah, which is going to be a fun match. However, Freddie, um, oh, yeah. Uh, Freddie so versus Shalgren? Yeah. Probably. Master versus Apprentice. It, it screams really. a least win. It screams a least win. Does it? Yeah, it does. It does. Trust me, it does. Okay. This is the way it is with them. They won. They're going to go on a streak now. Watch. Uh, all right. No, I'm sure they're going to go on a streak, but. I don't know if this uh, screams the Leafs win. I just, God help Matt Murray's. It's his groin, right? Or is it yeah, yeah. Groin? groin? Okay, God. I was honestly, God bless his groin, but that's going to sound kind of weird if I do say it. Mm-hmm. Um, you said it yeah. anyways. Okay, this is the big debate in Leafs land right now. I can't wait to have it. Is so it? in the in the aftermath of this this crap with the Flyers game, Travis Konechny being, you know, being a Flyer and all that, sure, Torts loved it. The stuff with Matthew Giordano bunting turned into goons, and Matthew says that pant and smile on his face. Obviously, the one he had against Ben Sherratt in that playoff series. Never forget. Um, how'd it go? Sorry, Alex, I had to. Um, Mike Rupp, former NHLer, had a lot of things to say. And the debate about Matthews fighting has come out a lot. Mitch Marner basically saying, you know, we saw it. Um, you know, uh, do you want Matthews fighting? Mitch, I thought you didn't pay attention to what was said about the team, but whatever. That's just me. Sorry, Mitch. Um, okay. Let's talk about this. People have been saying Joe Sackick didn't fight. Wayne Gretzky didn't fight. Don't think that's a fair comparison because Marty McSorley's one job was to punch people. So, and that was the eighties, not very fair guys. Um, where is your, where do you guys stand in the, in the, the debate of 
Matthews sort of, let's not even say fighting. I don't think we should ever really see him often drop the mitts. I think that's very different. Malkin doesn't do it often, but when he does, you know it's Malkin. He's going to kill it. It's fun stuff. Mm-hmm. You love to see it. I'm not saying if Matthew should fight or not because we don't want him fighting. Yeah. Okay, that's a completely <laughs> different debate. But should he be more in your face? Should he be a bit more of a Boston? Yeah. Let's go just before I answer. How this has turned into a should Matthews be fighting conversation is beyond me. And it's like, did has, did anyone watch the video? I watched the video that Mike Yo, Rob put out. It had see, nothing to do with he didn't say Matthews had to fight. Did you see this video? I would love if Matthews kind of turned into this. I was watching the Stars Oilers game, right? Did yeah. you see the clip with with uh, Jamie Ben and, and uh, Zach Hyman? And Zach Hyman. Yes, yes. It reminded me of that clip of Hosa and Perry, where Perry doesn't let go of the stick until Hosa gives up, and then Perry drops it. Yeah. I I would love if Matthews turned into that little shitster. Oh yeah. God, sorry. sorry. Okay. Oh gosh, I've gone. I've only gone and done it. But I would love if Mar if if Matthews had a bit more of that sort of not the the smirk that he has, but if he just turned in because he's a big Her, dude. Turn you know, that. Yeah. Go I'm not ahead. trying to do the Tortorella turn a Mustang into a I don't know truck. I, I don't know. A Patrick Lina into a power forward. Exactly, but like you know, I would like if Matt. Well, I personally wouldn't like because I don't want the Leafs to win. But I think there's room for 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 Matthews to get a bit more edge to his game. It certainly helped Crosby. You want the spice? Tur- tur- turn or- that turn that smirk into some action. Into some. That's what I yeah, smirk into yeah, spice. Tur- Turn I that like smirk that. into yes. spice. Yes, let's let's go. That just might have to be the uh, name of the episode. People are like, um, "What are they talking smirk, about?" Do you have to listen spice. to the episode to find out? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, to, but I guess to actually answer your question, I would all like. I didn't disagree with. See, I when I first saw that the headlines going around, I'm like, "No, man, I disagree." Matthew shouldn't fight. Not, uh, and then I watched the video, and I'm like. No, he makes a very valid point that it's like, yes, like, I think if you want to, if, if you're going to be a leader on this team, go, go watch John Tavares the last two games. Oh God, he's been good. Like talk about leading by action. I I would argue that that that's what John Suarez has been doing the last two games. Um, I'd like to see a little snow because if Austin Matthews is doing that, no one else on that roster has any excuse not to be the same way. It's hard to be. It's hard to be. You know. <sighs> Name a player. Let's say Pierre Engvall. That's a guy who's also much bigger and should be throwing his body around a lot more. If Austin Matthews is doing that, there's no reason Pierre Engvall shouldn't be. Right? So I, I think if you want, if we want the entire team to be snarly, what's what's the word we're going to use? Spicy. If we want the team to be spicy, I, I think it starts from the top down and, and goes down. And that's like, you know, seeing Morgan, seeing Morgan Riley do that a few games ago uh, against Winnipeg, um, you know, I mean, I, I I don't expect him to do that, but Mark Giordano literally, man, when I saw Mark Giordano do that, that was I was great, yeah. I was kind of upset. I'm not gonna lie, I was. I'm like, guys, 39 year old Mark Giordano, like, really? Or this is the this is what we've come to? I was a little upset, and then I'm like, I was I was uh, at a pool hall, and they had the game on the projector, and I, and I'm like, dude, we gotta stop. I need to watch what just happened because in the last six to seven years of watching this core i've never once seen a scrum like that so i had to admire it a little bit alex the billiard bl- ah, I, misspoke. <laughs> I was gonna make a joke can't do okay. it yeah. um, it's okay i don't know i'd like to play devil advocate with mike rupp okay okay in a way because like the way i kind of see it is yeah skilled guys but like what do you kind of expect like the way he, okay when he played i'm looking back on his stats with things yep. and i remember mike rupp from the early new jersey years like when he came into the league, he like do you expect a Patrick Eliash, a Scott Gomez when he was good, a Jeff Friesen, not wow. the Jeff Friesen, but like a Brian Gianta. Scott Gomez, ouch. To like well, like when he was like a top line center, like do you expect those guys 
to fight or do you expect you know a michael bunting a mike rupp to come yeah but but i don't think it's about fighting like i think it's about being it's about being a as Adam put, it's about being a shit disturber. Like, <laughs> like that. That's what this is all about. Like this. It, this I, I think that we've been too. We're so focused on the fighting part of it, where that's not what this is about. Like Alex Ovechkin is. I, I would not want to mess with that guy. Yeah, How many Guinea times? Malkin. Like I, the, there's guys. It's about being a guy. You to me, you're not messing with him. Mm-hmm. Like he's a he's i don't i'm gonna pull it up right now like he's not a small human being like he's six three 220 pounds that's a big dude like I, i'm not messing with him right i mean obviously no. i would never mess with him regardless but like I, I want him to act like he shouldn't be messed with not because of his skill but because he'll push back and i think that's something that's something he did i I think he very much improved upon on last season. Uh, and it was a big, I, not it was a big concern, but to me it was the one thing he was missing in his game for the first few years. Uh, and like, listen, everyone's doing it now. Crosby like has like eight fights in his career. Like I'm not, again, I'm not suggesting he fights, but again, I'm not messing with Sidney Crosby. Like, I mean, Who's I'm not. Who is Brandon Dubinsky? I want yeah, to. like. Like I'm not messing with I'm not messing with um, Connor McDavid because I might get an elbow to the face. But I'm like I'm not. <laughs> Never I'm not, forget that no call. Like, <laughs> Never again, like I'm not like I might like again. It's about building that rapport that you're you don't want to be messed with, and that doesn't necessarily have to be through fighting. But again, like look the Jamie Ben Zach Hyman stuff. That's if Austin oh Matthews, <laughs> if Austin Matthews pulled that, I wouldn't even be mad, right? You like, know, sorry, uh, you guys. Um, did you see the Josh Anderson hit on Alex Petrangelo last night? Oh, that was I brutal. Did. I did. Yeah, I got. I, you know what? Player safety just uh, said that Kachuk's getting a hearing. I would like to know why Josh Anderson didn't get didn't get one, but that was Alex Petrangelo, right? Now everyone jumped in for him, but the first guy to go after Josh Anderson was yeah. Alex Petrangelo. Yeah. Um, I just think there's something inspiring. Alex, you touched on a little earlier. You see Matthews not being afraid to go into a bite. I, I I said I meant to say bite. I don't know why I said bite, but like I think there's a little something a little inspiring about when you see a guy who's not afraid to get down and dirty. And you're like, oh, that's that's my he's not the captain, yeah. but like that's my damn That's my guy. That's my guy. That's my my fellow, that's my my teammate. Yeah. You know. Also, very like Josh Anderson. How in the world he did not get or hasn't gotten discipline yet is beyond me. That was such a dumb hit. Um, you know what the Leafs need? Corey Perry. I'm kidding. I okay. don't get out of here. <laughs> Would you like a slightly used Christian Dvorak? He's no. not a fighter, but man, he's good in the net front presence. I'm okay. The uh, first round pick for Arbor Jackai? Oh, uh, yeah. Man, you don't tell me they wouldn't love Arbor Jackai, but no, he's ours. Leave him alone. Costco, Wi Fi. Sheriff in town. Okay, that's it. Thank you for listening. Fun show. Um, maybe fun. Wednesday, all of us are going to be here. Maybe not. We'll see. Mm-hmm. It's a fluid situation. Yeah, we, we will see. Um, and there's going to be hockey on, which is always fun. yes. What's this? What? Okay, what's the score tonight, Carolina, Toronto? Um, seven four, Toronto. Okay. That you know Nylander what that's a really to. that's a, such a really good uh, really good point because the for whatever reason Carolina um, Toronto games are a high scoring affair unless David Ayers is in it then it's not a high scoring and affair. three goalies will play three oh, goalies wow okay three goalies will play and will that be two goalies from the Leafs or two goalies I don't from know the Hurricanes? I don't know but three goalies okay. will. Uh, Yes. No, I'm scared. I got. I have to see Keith Petruzzelli play in his first NHL game. <laughs> that's worrying. Um, maybe it's one of the Carolina ones. I don't see Jet Alexander. Though, but... No, 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 no. Jet Alexander. He's played the last two nights. He needs a rest. Okay, he needs a break. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go five three Leafs. Okay. okay. We have seven nice. six leaves. Good lord! If I have to in watch, overtime, like, I'm gonna, oh, god. <laughs> oh god! The real question is: Do the Leafs blow a lead? And oh. if so, how big? Five one, but they win it. Oh seven, my six. god, Daniel! I, 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 if they 
blow us five one lead, I'm gonna I'm gonna be so mad at you. I'm gonna send you I'm gonna send you a ridiculous offer for Steven Samkos. <laughs> okay, well, uh, Daniel, are you winning in fantasy this week? I am. Who like you face? Forty points. Very good. Who you Who Thank you playing? You. Uh, Curtis. Oh, good, good. So all three of us right now are set to. But win. uh, this is a challenging one. He got up to like three forty eight. I had to like. You know, this is like my season high. I'm at like 379 right now. Very good. Very good. Well, we'll see. Nick, who are you, do you know who you're facing next week? I can go check that quick. All right. I'm playing Will Baldwin. I'm not facing you guys until like the very end of the, uh, oh, not the very end, but like in the very end of the list of the people on, I was about in the to fantasy say, I played Alex. I played Mike. I haven't played you yet. Yeah. We have to wait a while. It's going to be rousing. Nick Suzuki plays his former Who's team. Who's a PD revenge season? That's Scott, Scott Dawson. All right, face Scott Dawson next week. Interesting. He's been. Good. That's currently our number one team. Could oh. change by the end of today. Alex could take the lead, but okay, that's everything. In case you wonder what happened to fantasy this week, we didn't hit our quote of mentioning every other segment, but uh-huh. um, every segment more like it. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you next time you're around. Two and one podcast. Goodbye. Damn.